All right, one of the things that pops up in every one of our long range rifle classes is Coriolis effect and spin drift, okay? Um, it's in every ballistic program, it's out there, it's in some manuals, and it's theory, okay? Here's where I'm coming from. I was on several um, long range rifle and, and, and sniping type web pages where there's interaction between the folks that are on them. And a question came up from a kid that was a brand new army sniper. He was getting ready to go to sniper school and he was worried about how he was going to pass this course. So of course he put it out there to any army snipers. Hey, what am I going to get to go through? What do I need to work on? And one of the answers he got really pissed me off. It was, you need to worry about Coriolis and spin drift more than anything else. Now, Given the plethora of ever other information, mathematical equations on range estimation, sight alignment, sight picture, breathing, trigger control, follow through, prepping for, prep for the next shot, all these things result in quality accuracy down range if you do them properly. Coriolis and spin drift are theory, okay? Whether you want to agree to this or not, it's somebody's mathematical theory. So I want to talk about a couple things. Number one, Coriolis effect. It has to do with as the earth spins, we launch a projectile at a, at a location, downrange, at a target, and the concept of thought is that the Earth is going to move and the projectile is going to maintain its position in the world and hit behind the target due to the right-hand turn, left-hand turn of the Earth, depending on if you're north or south of the equator. All right, now, so the, the question is, how fast is the Earth moving? It's going about 1,000 miles per hour. 400 and some meters per second ends up at a thousand miles per hour. I'm not a, a, a world guy, so I'm not going to tell you I know exactly. This is what I got off the internet. Does it really matter? No. Here's something I want you to consider. If the earth was spinning at a thousand miles per hour and we did not have the concept of Newton's law and gravity into play, as I threw this pointer up in the air, it would actually hit that wall going a thousand miles per hour because as it comes up, it's being captured and thrown. Okay, same thing. If I jumped my fat ass up in the air, I would be thrown against the wall a thousand miles per hour. You don't want to see that. It's not going to happen anyway. All right. As the projectile gets launched, it's in the gravity pull of the earth. And that bullet, whether it's coming up, down, straight, doesn't matter. As the earth turns, it is grabbed into that same orbital and the bullet is going a thousand miles per hour as well. So your bullet is going to go where it says it's going to go. All right, or where you aim it to go, I should say. Now, let's look at what the theorists are saying. At 300 yards, Coriolis effect is going to be 0.61 of an inch. So a half inch, a little bit more than a half inch at 300 yards. 800 yards, 2.04 inches. Okay? If a man-sized kill zone, 23 at the elbows and about 14 or 15 inches between the nipples, do you think we need, really need to add in some kind of additional mathematical equation to worry about Coriolis? Is that two inch left or right going to hurt us when we're talking about killing a man? Absolutely not. You're going to be left lung, right lung, or heart area if you've done your elevations properly. All right, so let's set this Coriolis stuff aside for a long gunner, okay? Now, if you're an artillery guy or a naval gunfire guy and you're launching shells the size of Volkswagens at miles, okay, multiple miles, the size of the projectile, the speed of the projectile, and the distance involved, maybe you will have some kind of an offset. I'm not saying yes or no, I'm not that guy. I'm just a, a 308, 338 shooter. That's all I am. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, it has very little effect. The other side of the coin is, are you calling wind good enough at 800 yards to know that that 2.4 inches is not a wind error on your side or it's Coriolis? I say let's try to call a good wind call, aim center mass, fundamentals of marksmanship shoot the shot. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about spin drift. This is the other theoretical concept. And in the end, I'm going to tell you why we need a certain piece of equipment to do it that's not even available in the world yet. Okay, spin drift is the concept of as the, the shot is fired, the bullet hits your lands and grooves and turns the bullet in a right hand rotation, just like throwing a football. The rotation adds stability. It will go where you want it to go at that point. As soon as it loses stability, it goes where it wants to go. Okay. So, the concept of spin drift, a lot of folks are saying at 500 yards, and I'm not even going to go under that because the numbers don't matter, that you are going to be adrift at 1.5 inches right of your intended point of aim, point of impact. So 500, 1.5 inches right. At 1,000, it's 9 inches to the right. Okay? Now, I'm going back to the concept of windage. All right? 
What, does it have a drift? Yes, it probably does. Okay, I'm going to have to say yes in this case. Does it matter to you what that drift is? No, it doesn't. If you apply the fundamentals of marksmanship properly, crosshairs where they need to be, do the right dope on the gun, fire the shot effectively, you're going to get a good hit on, ta on target. We're back to the errors involved at the ranges again. We'll use 500. Does it matter if you are one and a half inches left or right of your aim point, in this case, at 500 yards? Absolutely not. Still a killing shot. At 1,000 yards, 10 inches may have an effect, but I'm back to the wind again. Is it not you calling a bad wind call, or is it spin drift? We don't know. Now, the problem with the standard theory and Rod's theory, or Storm Mountain's theory, is we can't test either side of the coin. We basically need a 1,000 yard indoor range with 100% no wind conditions inside that to prove this fact, or theory, I should say. It's not available to my knowledge. I, have, I know of no indoor range with no wind conditions in the country or the world, and I've shot on a bunch of ranges. For that matter, I say apply the fundamentals of marksmanship, dial in your wind properly, which is the big issue, shoot your shot, and adjust off of that. Thanks very much. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check us out at stormmountain.com or smtc.us. We look forward to seeing you in long gun courses in the future. Take care.